Welcome to the build log number 7 video. In this video, we'll be printing. It's alive! To start off with, I disassembled all the electronic components from my old Prusa i3 Replicio frame. The hot end, the fan, the electronics, the stepper motors, the heated bed, it's all been removed and now installed on the new printer frame. As I started assembling all the components on this frame, so the uh, left and right stepper motors, uh, the top stepper motor, the extruder uh, stepper motor, uh, I quickly realized that cable length became the issue with installing everything at the moment. Uh, I haven't cable tied anything, that's the ramps board with the Arduino underneath. I haven't tidied anything up yet because the stepper motor cables from the left and right motors are too short. They're kind of uh, crossing underneath the frame over here uh, and over here. So I need to lengthen those up just so I can uh, mount the ramps board probably on the back of the frame uh, here somewhere. Uh, then I can tidy up and cable tie uh, all those up. With the end stops, the end stop cables were also a little bit short, but um, anyone who's into remote control will know uh, all you need are these uh, servo extension leads. Uh, these uh, cables that come out of the end stops are just the standard three wire uh, connectors and they fit into the um, servo extension leads very easily and of course that goes into the ramps board as well. So I've done that for this end stop, for the end stop coming out of the X carriage uh, and I think the end stop coming out of the z-axis is direct because it's long enough. The cables coming out of the uh, extruder, of course, are long enough because these were quite long on my Prusa i3 to begin with. So there's plenty of length here to make it to the ramps board. And of course, I haven't bothered tidying this up yet because I actually wanted to start printing sooner rather than later. But before I begin, let me show you how all the end stops work and how all the axes move. The loudest thing on this 3D printer so far is the fan from the E3D. This little 30mm fan is whizzing around very fast and is still the loudest part of this printer. I'll start off with homing the, uh, the Z-axis. As you can hear, it's quite quiet. I've added a spring and washer to the adjustment of the z-axis. That was um, some advice from the comments. And she's homed. And I've homed that with the nozzle. As you can see, if it will focus, there we go. I'll now home the X and Y axes. I'll just drop the, the bed platform by a little bit first. So I'll home the X axis. Home the Y axis. Fantastic. The printing dimensions of this printer, the way it's physically configured, is 220 millimeters on the X axis, 170 millimeters on the Y axis, and we're getting 170 because if I move the Y to the very front, it's now homed there, you can see the nozzle is about 10 millimeters shy from the front of the bed here, and if I push this all the way back, That's about 170 millimeters there, and you can see on the bed, I'm about another 20 millimeters back. So there's the 30 millimeters I'm missing. Now, if I can uh, move the Z-axis stepper motor uh, to the top of this extrusion here, so move it back another 20 millimeters, which I could do because there's there's about a 20 millimeter gap there between the coupler. Uh, and the extrusion, then I'll probably be able to print to the very back of the bed and that, that will give me the, the 190 millimeters in the y-axis, which is, which is pretty good. Uh, but for the time being, I'm stuck on one, uh, 170. And on the z-axis, I was on 170 millimeters, but as what was mentioned also in the comments, I've had to include a bearing on a, on a new mount 
for the whole Z axis, the whole build platform, everything to rest on. Uh, I'll go over this in a moment, but um, the first prints that I was doing, printing calibration cubes, I was seeing a lot of Z axis artifacts, and turns out, yeah, it was just the springiness of the coupler, uh, not centering, I guess, every rotation or after every uh, homing, so that was able to solve that problem. Here's the first bunch of calibration cubes that I've printed on this 3D printer. Uh, calibration cubes, of course, are the first thing you print uh, once you've commissioned a new printer. And the very first cube came out with the correct dimensions, 20 millimeters tall, wide, and deep. Now these calibration cubes, they're only two perimeters thick. They're hollow and there's uh, no top or bottom perimeters. Uh, the first thing I noticed though, besides um, the actual uh, calibration coming out fine was some random uh, z-axis banding, I guess you could say, uh, up up the walls of, of the first couple of cubes. And I, I noticed that while it was printing, the bed was kind of jumping around just a little bit whenever the uh, the, the print head was moving around quite, quite fast. Um, and there was no way for me to stop that because the whole bed was being suspended on that coupler which is attached to the uh, the motor and the lead screw. So uh, setting up that, that block at the base for the whole lead screw and assembly to sit on, uh, I was able to then produce much nicer calibration cubes. Uh, another massive win for this printer is the problem that I had on my Prusa i3 was on the y-axis and on acceleration moves on the y-axis I was seeing a lot of ghosting and that was even with uh, a lower acceleration, an acceleration of 800. But on this printer with the acceleration set to even 1000, so it's still quite, quite average but higher than what I had, there is none of that ghosting or oscillation or vibration. There's none of that on the X or Y axis. So uh, the printer, the whole concept has been a win uh, for me. So the whole build platform and lead screw is now resting uh, on this bearing attached to this block. Uh, you may have noticed on the linear guide rail clamps, I haven't populated the button head screw and T-slot nut into any of them, so that one there uh, that one over there doesn't have one, panning up to the top, that one doesn't have one, nor does that one, because I've run out of the T-slot nuts. I've used the entire bag of 100 T-slot nuts, and I need more, which isn't very good, because I think that'll also be contributing to, to any other little issues that I might come across on the Z-axis, and, and probably to make matters worse, I'll pan around to the back. If we look at the, the nut holder, you'll see here as well, uh, the whole bed is being suspended by the button head screw at the top. Um, once again, I've run out of T-slot nuts, so I haven't populated the two uh, mounting points at the back. So uh, I think I'll be uh, printing quite slow and conservatively, at least initially with this printer, uh, especially with the plastic parts that I have. Uh, they're PLA, which isn't too bad, but I've only printed these with a 15% infill. So they're, they're basically hollow. Uh, and there's only two perimeters, so one of the first things I'll be doing with this printer uh, this weekend is reprinting all the parts in PETG. Uh, Araram have been kind enough to send a roll of their brand new PETG for me to review, so I'll kill two birds with one stone, I'll review their, their product and also use it to print out new parts. Thank you. 
And here is the first successful print with the new 3D printer. This is the Twisted Vase. This is one of the first items that I printed on my Replicio Prusa i3, so I thought it would be uh, pertinent to print this as a first print on the new 3D printer. As you can see, it's come up really nice. The walls are, are nice and straight, and I printed this at 50 millimeters a second, so, you know, a half decent speed, faster than what I normally print with the Prusa anyway. Um, one thing you may notice, and it's only if I shimmer this in the light at the right angle, you might see, I have to turn this around a bit I think, turn this to about here maybe, or well, you might be able to see that, there's just the ever slightest amount of, and I'm, I'm being pedantic here, the slightest amount of ripple that you might be able to see. You can't feel it with your finger, but you can, you can see it um, shining in the light, and it's, it's very subtle. Now, if I bring in... Uh, a piece that I've printed with the Prusa i3 for the same uh, Ararum's uh, purple uh, PLA. Look at the amount of ripples that this one here has, and this was one of the issues that I had on the Prusa i3. I printed this one at 50 millimeters a second as well, and if I hold them both up, you can see that the uh, this is the Darth Vader low poly Darth Vader. It's way worse. Like it's. Like this one here, you, you can feel the, it's like an onion, not onion skin, an, an orange skin, sorry, you can feel, an orange peel skin you can feel on the back of his cape here. But on this one here, it's it's smooth, so I'm really happy so far with the results on this new printer. And it's only going to get better. This is, you know, the first print and there's still some tuning to do and this is almost one of the last prints I did with the Prusa i3, so really looking forward to the future with this new printer.